Today we're doing a composite quick and dirty style, baby. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name's Aaron Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AKNacer. You can find me here on Flurn five days a week. We make these videos to help you get better at Photoshop, photography, and life. Today we're working on one of our family's images. This is John Henbest, and we're doing a quick, dirty composite. In other words, it's gonna look good, but it's gonna be just the fastest thing we can do. And there's a lot of value in doing these things. Um, like you can create a bunch of different looks like this to kind of get an idea of what you want your final composite to look like. So oftentimes I'll like do a really rough composite to just get everything in one image and then if I like it at that stage I'll go back and refine it and probably just don't go over from the start but this is just to like get it to be like okay will I even like this at all in the end so that's what we're doing today quick and rough okay here are our images today we've got an explosion we've got a, a picture of a building here it's very very cool and this is John Henbest he sent this over image he sent this image over in the suggested episode so what we're gonna be doing is compositing these together I just pulled these offline so this is not official at all um, first thing I want to do here is I want to bring everything together so I'm just gonna go ahead and use my move tool and hit shift click and drag these over from one image to the other there we go and I'm gonna hit full screen F to full screen that so you can see each of these images like this image of John is way bigger than these others like it's no comparison so what we can do we can either rescale John or we can rescale these other ones um, what I want to do actually I'm gonna just create a duplicate of my background layer and I'm gonna scale my background layer out and I'm gonna tell you guys why in just a second. Um, well, let's go ahead and scale John down. So it'll, I think it'll make more sense once I scale John down. Okay, um, you can see John was taken not at like a super wide angle. He was taken at a relatively normal focal length and the, back, the background image was taken at a wide, wide angle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stretch the background angle to make it match what's going on with John a little bit more. Um, so let's make John a little bit smaller here there we go. He's going to be in the foreground of this image, so that's probably about good. And now what I want to do with the background is I want to stretch this out. And you can see when you stretch something out like this, see how it, everything looks like it's taken with a wide angle? Stretching it out is just going to make it look a little bit more normal. Okay, so stretching that out, well, stretch it out that way just a little bit too. Now we're going to go to image and then down to reveal all, which is going to actually show me all of this stuff. Okay, so We've got that, we've got John in here, and then we've got an explosion. So first thing I wanna do is uh, cut out John. And remember there guys, this is quick and dirty. This is as much as we can possibly do in as short amount of time as possible. So is this like the 100% best way to cut someone out of the background? No, it never is. I'm just using the lasso tool and like literally tracing around our subject. So it's not gonna get something horrible, but it is, you know, it's not gonna be as precise of a selection as like a pen tool so if you guys are you know going for something a little bit more precise pen tool even a magnetic lasso tool pretty much anything except for the regular lasso tool would be better but this is quick and it's dirty and that's what today is all about John's rocking his live strong bracelet and I appreciate that and apparently he has a lot of guns so um, <laughs> not someone I would mess with all right there we go and we'll go all the way to the on the bottom now, when you guys are doing composites, the biggest tip I can give you to make a composite easier on yourself is to not have the person standing in the composite. In other words, have like their waist up in the photo, and then you don't even have to worry about the shadows and all that stuff. You don't have to worry about any of the hard stuff, really. Um, just cut them off at the waist, and then that, that's perfect. You can see like people like Joel Grimes and you know photographers like that. They they almost always do that. They have like people from the waist up, like almost every composite, because it's just way easier all right so we've got our subject in here I'm gonna go ahead and crop this in to our background there we go crop that in there and this as well perfect now our subject here we're gonna move him somewhere right about there scale him a little bit bigger now remember guys this is like total quick and dirty this is not how I think this should actually happen in real life but we're gonna be able to get something relatively cool out of it in not a whole lot of time all right and I'm gonna stretch this out just a little bit too I'm just trying to match perspective mostly you can see like it looks weird if he's too far low or if he's too high so I'm trying to match this to where it's like it would be believable that he's actually standing on the ground okay perfect and then we have our explosion and with our explosion we're just gonna bring that a little bit bigger I'm gonna change this from normal down to screen blending mode and you can see it's just it takes away the black which is great now 
we have to put these like where the actual light sources are the image so you can shift click on your layer mask here and then you can see like that's where your umbrella was that actually lit John so an explosion is like you know okay cool it's also a bit of light so that makes sense that it would be there all right so we'll put it there now we have to get everything together and have it actually look good and clean um, I'm gonna go ahead and crop this in just a little bit there we go that's gonna look great Okay, so we need to make sure everything matches with like the colors and light levels and everything like that because it, it just really looks horrible right now. So the best thing we can do is start off with is um, we can look at John and we can see if I shift click on the layer mask, the background is actually pretty dark here. Um, like So that's where the shadows on him are pretty dark and we need to make our background dark to match that. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna grab a curves adjustment layer on top of our background. Option command G is gonna clip that to our background, so it's only gonna affect our background now. And basically, I'm just gonna click and drag this down, making it quite a bit darker. All right, that looks great. And we're gonna do the same thing with John as well, because you can see some of the light areas, like this, how it looks kind of gray right there, that's because of the lens flare. Um, if you guys wanna avoid lens flare, just use a flag in between your light and your camera, and you won't get this lens flare. That's what that is right there, that kind of, create some image degradation. It's not a huge deal, especially if you're making an explosion or something like that, but if you want like a really clean image, you wanna to try to avoid that lens flare. All right, let's make another curves adjustment layer here. Option command G to clip that and click and drag that down just a little bit as well. Cool, looking good. And now this is gonna be visible as a screen layer and I'm gonna put a layer mask on that and we're just gonna paint black at about 20%. All right, and this is just basically getting rid of like all the outlines and stuff like that. Okay, and I think, let's see, we'll put that behind John so it's like actually looks like it's behind him, which is important. If you wanna make something look like it's behind someone, put it behind them. There we go, we've got our <laughs> explosion um, looking pretty good. Now, the first thing I wanna do, first thing I wanna do, we're like into this, but we have to make the explosion kind of look like it's actually lighting our scene. So I'm going to go ahead and make John invisible, and I'm going to try to make this explosion look like it's lighting this scene. So we're going to do another curves adjustment layer on our background layer. Curves, and then Option Command G to clip that. And I want to bring some of the colors in from the explosion into the highlights and, uh, you know, the colors of my posts here. So to do that, we're going to just grab our red channel, green channel, blue channel. Um, I'm going to grab green, and I'm going to kind of just pull down a bit there. There we go, we're gonna grab blue, and I've got my hand tool. We're gonna grab blue and pull that down as well. So green and blue pulling both of those down means the red is staying a little bit higher. So red in comparison is, there's more red in this scene now. And especially when I click on my highlights and kind of drag those up, and then I'm gonna click here on my shadows and drag those down a little bit. There we go, maybe not up so high. And our blue channel, I'm gonna click on my highlights and drag those down a little bit as well. So we're getting some more of the color from our, you can see there's a pretty big difference between those two. One of them looks like it was, you know, maybe colored by this explosion. The other one just doesn't look like that at all. All right, on a new layer, I'm gonna hit Option Command G again, and I'm gonna actually just grab this color here and paint over some of these areas. There we go. All right, and we'll change this to something like an overlay layer. And I'm going to double click on here and tell it to not be visible where my underlying layer is um, darker. And this is going to only affect my highlight layers, so or my, the areas that are highlights. So it's going to look more like, you know, this light is actually, you can see there, it's affecting the highlights on, on these areas a little bit better. All right. Now, something kind of weird in the background. I'm going to create a new layer and clip that as well. You can see how it colored all this stuff back there. We don't want that stuff colored. So I'm just going to take this brush tool, and you can do... You can do this in a million different ways. You can use a brush tool, you could use a clone stamp tool. I'm just gonna clone stamp all this stuff out because I don't think it's really helping. It's just kind of a distraction to be honest. So I'm just gonna get rid of it and then we have a nice big explosion there, which looks pretty cool. Okay, now we gotta bring John in here and we gotta make sure he matches what's going on with our explosion as well. And you can still move this stuff around. Like, you know, I, I don't know exactly that that's where I want him to be, but um, you can still move everyone around. Okay, now we're gonna grab another curves adjustment layer. So you can see this is like quick and dirty, guys. This is like, how fast can I possibly do this thing and still get something that looks okay? 
Okay, now with our curves adjustment layer, you can see he's got quite a bit of blue in him. Like he looks way more blue than everything else around. So we're gonna grab the blue channel and just click this little hand there, click here and drag that down. All right, and we're gonna do the same thing with our greens. All right, and now you can see he's starting to fit in the scene quite a bit better because we took the blues and the greens out of him and it's like, okay, yeah, explosions are red. We want that color um, that's gonna fit quite a bit better. All right, that's definitely looking good. I think we wanna bring the black levels down a little bit too. So I'm gonna to go to RGB here and click on the darker levels and just kind of bring that down. There we go. And maybe on the light levels, bring that up just a little bit. All right, there's just a little area on his hat. You can see that I didn't manage to mask out very well. It's not a huge deal, but if you have like a light area like this, it's gonna really keep someone from blending into the background. Like the only way you would have light on the edge of someone is something like this. Like if there's actual light behind the person. So just make sure that when you guys are doing this sort of thing, they keep in mind like where all your light sources and everything like that are coming from. All right, there we go. And there's a big explosion behind John. It was a little too big. All right, now what I wanna do again on top of John, just like I did with the pillars, I'm gonna grab this color here and I'm gonna paint over this side of our subject. We're gonna change this from normal to soft light. And then I'm gonna double click on this, tell this not to be visible where my underlying layer is darker. That's gonna help bring some of that color. You can see there, I'll just zoom in for you. That's gonna help bring some of that color of the explosion into his skin. So it's like, okay, that thing actually might be, you know, causing his skin to change color, which that's how light works. So it's perfect. All right, now on a layer underneath that, I'm gonna do some the same thing basically with the ground. Um, a little bit more with this area. Change this from normal down here to soft light as well. And double click on this, tell it not to be visible where the underlying layer is darker again. So we can see now the explosion's kind of like hitting the ground, which is perfect. That's exactly what we want. And we're almost done, guys. You, there's a lot of stuff you can do from here. Like if you want to, um, let's see, I kind of want to darken this area down, like maybe his hand just a bit. So I'm gonna grab my curves adjustment layer again. Doing a lot with curves today. You can do a lot to color people with curves and um, that's, there's nothing else to say there. <laughs> curves are used to color people. There we go, ha 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 ha, I'm good at talking. There we go, darkening this guy down on that side because that's not, you know, that's not really lit by anything. Lower the opacity just a little bit on that. All right, perfect. So there is our quick and dirty composite. And you can do this in, you know, basically like any way you want to. These little areas should be dark, actually. Um, since we set this little, this layer mask to screen, it is only showing up as light. So if I hit Command J um, and put this back to normal, you can see it is like areas where, where it's actually supposed to be dark. You can see it looks weird, but here in the middle, it looks better. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a black layer mask on that, just fill that with black, and then I'm gonna paint with white on my layer mask at 100% here, and we're just gonna bring back those middle areas where it actually, you know, that's like shrapnel, like it's not supposed to be light or dark. There we go, so it's not showing what's going on through there. All right, shift tab that and zoom it in. Guys, that's it for today. Boom, quick and dirty composite. See, you can composite images in like two minutes. It really doesn't take long and you can get something pretty cool like this. Just make sure the most important thing you guys can do is pay attention to your light levels. Like there's, looks like there's an explosion lighting that side of him and that's, that's pretty important to make sure that actually happens. And then it's no work. It's just like, you know, this cast light over here. So put a light source there and that cast light over there. So put a light source there and it all matches up. That's it. Guys, there's a Facebook contest going on right now on Facebook. We're gonna link to that below. You can send in your images and we're gonna edit one of your guys' images for a Flurn Pro tutorial. Can't wait to see them. Can't wait to see your responses with this. Did you think this is cool? Did you think this sucked? If you liked it, we can do more of it. Thanks so much for watching Flurn. I'll flurn you later, guys. John, watch out, man. There's a giant random explosion behind you that doesn't make any sense.